Hi guys, it's Michelle and today's video is going to be yet another unsolved mysteries video for you guys. I love talking about unsolved cases. It's obviously interesting to talk about cases in depth that have been solved and like we know what's happened, but the unsolved ones are just always so eerie to me and I also think it's really important to talk about because there is somewhere out there somebody who knows something at the end of the day so it's always important to talk about so without further ado let's get right into the unsolved mysteries right, the first case that we're going to talk about honestly is so creepy and so heartbreaking i can't even imagine how terrible this would be if this was your family member it is just horrendous so an elderly couple named russell and shirley Derman lived in a very quiet like rich nice community in georgia this was a gated community it was very safe russell was 88 years old at the time and his wife shirley was 87. russell was a very successful businessman he had owned several franchises like wendy's and hardy's um just different fast food franchises and did really well for himself and it seemed like him and shirley were just enjoying retirement in their nice lovely home in georgia that was in a very safe community where it seemed like nothing bad happened shirley and russell were happily living in this home until may of 2014 when things got extremely dark last time the dermans were seen alive was when they were running errands on may 1st of 2014 everything appeared to be normal no one had any concern nothing was out of the ordinary however on may 3rd the dermans were supposed to attend a like block party with their neighbors and they never showed up which definitely concerned the neighbors at first because that was very unlike the dermans they would have called and said that they can't make it after a couple days of still not hearing from the dermans the neighbors decided to take matters into their own hands because they were genuinely concerned about their neighbors so on may 6th of 2014 they decided to check in on them they rang the doorbell of their house but there was no answer and the door happened to be unlocked so they let themselves in nothing in the house seemed out of the ordinary nothing was like missing or anything crazy it all looked normal but the only thing that was missing was shirley and russell one of the neighbors ended up checking the dermans garage and that was where they found a decapitated russell his head was missing and still to this day has never been found shirley was also nowhere to be found and for a long 10 days without knowing where shirley was people had different theories some people i'm sure thought maybe like she murdered russell or that she was kidnapped like there were so many different theories as to what happened but unfortunately on may 16th of 2014 fisherman discovered her body tied to cinder blocks in Lake Oconee, about five miles away from the couple's home. It was determined that Shirley had been bludgeoned to death and weighed down with these concrete blocks. This double homicide left the community shell-shocked. Like, this was so out of the ordinary for this small town in Georgia, and these people had no known enemies or any reason to believe that someone would want to murder them in cold blood and so horrifically. There were also no signs of forced entry in the house, no witnesses that had seen anything suspicious going on. Like I said, no obvious motives because these two did not have any weird enemies or anything that anyone knew of. Shirley and Russell's children were questioned at first, but never were actually suspects in the case. And no one to this day, I don't think, believes that their children were involved because they were just as shocked as the rest of the community. A couple theories went on about what the hell could have happened here. A botched robbery was a pretty popular theory, although very highly unlikely because like I said, the community was completely gated. There was no signs of forced entry. There was no witnesses. Like there are so many different details that don't make sense. And there was nothing missing from there house i just feel like if it was a robbery and they were going to go through killing these people why wouldn't they have taken things of value it makes no sense so the botched robbery theory was ultimately ruled out due to lack of evidence at first the investigators actually thought that the work of these murders were professionals at this like someone had hired them to murder this elderly couple but the logistics of that just didn't make sense because they had no enemies. There was no reason that someone would want this couple dead so badly that they would hire professionals to gruesomely murder them. A lot of people believe that there were multiple different perpetrators involved in this murder because there were so many different aspects to it. For example, there was some gun residue on Russell's shirt. So it's theorized that the reason that he was decapitated was to hide that evidence of like the bullet type but also the person who did this crime definitely had a very solid familiarity with the area because the lake that Shirley was found in was likely placed into the lake 
in the middle of the night because I don't think you're just going to put a dead body in a lake in the middle of the day, but you never know. So it must have been dark and it's just likely overall that this person knew their way around the area very well. Some people even think that the way that they got into the community was by boat. They took a boat across the lake into the backyard of this couple. So that's how they got past the gate. Like I said, their children were kind of questioned. Um, they had two kids at the time of their death, but they actually had a third son who died in the year 2000 trying to buy drugs in Atlanta. Although investigators have claimed that they think that this is completely unrelated to the crime, it's weird that something so gruesome reminded investigators of that of the drug cartel. Like the way that they were murdered, clearly whoever was doing this was trying to send some sort of a message according to investigators i guess that happens a lot in the drug cartel scene but usually never with elderly couples with no known enemies so maybe somehow the murder is connected to their son's passing because that also involved drugs but it's just strange because that was 14 years prior this past april may uh, 10 years after this happened the fbi actually discovered some new dna evidence that might lead to an arrest in the case at some point basically there was some new dna found on some of russell's article of clothing that didn't belong to either russell or shirley and it was basically just an undetermined specimen. It has been sent on for further testing in hopes of finding a match somewhere. The lead investigator, Howard Sills, definitely believes that this could be a break in the case. The FBI also believes that because they raise the reward for any information that leads to an arrest in the case from $5,000 to $25,000, which is a pretty crazy jump, which I think the FBI knows if they get some sort of suspect tip, you know, now that they have this DNA information, they could test different suspects against this DNA sample to hopefully solve the case. I feel like this case might be solved soon. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about it. I just think it's so horrible. I don't even know what I think happened. All right, the next unsolved case I want to talk about. I cannot believe I've never heard about this before because it involves another YouTuber. There is a YouTuber named Kenny Beach who is an experienced hiker and adventurer from Las Vegas, Nevada. He is known for his YouTube channel, Snake Bit McGee, where he would basically share several videos of himself doing daring hikes in various different places. In 2014, Kenny made a comment about how when he was hiking in the Mojave Desert in kind of near Area 51, he found this really strange M-shaped cave. It was in the middle of the desert and it was a perfect capital M, but what was really, really creepy about it is that it emitted a very strange and mysterious unsettling vibe. Kenny does extremely wild hikes very often. He's come across several like wild animals that are scary, snakes, all that stuff, and doing these dangerous hikes, usually by himself. So the fact that this cave scared the shit out of this man, I think says a lot. So basically what happened is Kenny found the M-shaped cave. He went up to it because he goes in all of the caves that he finds, he said. As he tried to enter this cave, his whole body started to vibrate. The vibration became worse as he got closer and closer to the entrance and he got so scared that he literally ran away. A man who deals with like freaking rattlesnakes on a daily basis got scared of a cave. Like, I just feel like this is so weird. He claims it is the scariest thing that has ever happened to him and the strangest by far because this man does not scare easily. I feel like that is saying a lot. Of course, people on the internet are curious and they really wanted Kenny to go back to this cave and vlog his experience. One comment that he got on this honestly creeps me out a lot because of how much it predicted the future. The comment said, quote, no, do not go back there. If you find that cave entrance, don't go in. If you do, you won't get out. That's exactly what happened on November 10th of 2014. Kenny decided to set off on a hike to investigate the M cave for his viewers, but he sadly never returned. His girlfriend reported him missing the next day because he was supposed to be back within a day. Like it was gonna be a very short excursion. So his girlfriend reported him missing. So that sparked an extensive search for Kenny. They scoured the area and they ended up finding Kenny's cell phone near an abandoned mine shaft, but there were no other signs of him. And to this day, nobody knows anything that happened to Kenny and he is just completely vanished from this earth. The only trace left behind was the cell phone. Honestly, very creepy. And we're gonna get into some theories about what happened. The first theory, and I feel like a common theory by people who rationalize things with logic, 
think that there was some sort of accidental death here. Kenny's phone was found near a mine shaft that maybe he had fallen down it. A lot of people think he could have been attacked and eaten by a wild animal of sorts. Second theory people have is an intentional disappearance. So basically a lot of people thought that Kenny had committed suicide because he was going through a lot of personal struggles at the time. However, his family and friends really believed that he would never have left his family like without a trace. I guess his close friends and family don't believe that Kenny would have put them through that type of anguish. But we're gonna come back to that theory later. But I wanna talk about like the most commonly believed theory is that there is something very dark going on with this M cave. A lot of people believe that maybe he had found an entrance to Area 51, like a secret entrance, or that there were aliens in that cave, or just that aliens, Area 51, and the government were somehow connected to this cave. As a result of Kenny trying to expose that cave online, many people think for sure that there was something otherworldly going on here and I kind of agree with that just because this Kenny character not a guy who scares easily he is doing all these crazy ass hikes and seeing crazy shit all the time the way that he described the feeling that he got from the cave is just bizarre I personally do just think that something very dark was going on here I do feel like it is important to note that a woman claiming to be Kenny's girlfriend left a comment for Kenny's viewers saying quote I am the girlfriend that Kenny spoke of in the video I want you to know that I do not think that Kenny had an accident I believe that he committed suicide battled depression for many years and he would not take medication or see a doctor he quit his job a little more than a year before before he disappeared. They found his car in the area that I told them that it would be, and they did find his cell phone by the mine shaft in the video. The mine shaft was only about a four hour hike from his car. It is my feeling that he left it behind so that he could not be tracked by GPS. He also did not take his video camera with him on this solo hike. It was left in his home, so he had no intention of filming anything. Well, I do feel like that's important to note, but also like, I don't know for sure that this is actually his girlfriend that said this, who knows? But I do think that it's still so strange how he really disappeared without a trace. And I really wanna hear you guys' thoughts on this because I had never heard of this case before and it's really freaky and I feel like once it involves conspiracy as well, it's just dark. All right, the last unsolved mystery that we're gonna be talking about is the case of Amy Lynn Bradley. And this is a very terrifying case. Thing that I think is interesting about it is I really do believe that she is still out there alive somewhere. So Amy Lynn Bradley was a 23 year old college graduate from Virginia. And in March of 1998, her and her family went on a Royal Caribbean cruise aboard the Rhapsody of the Sea. So this cruise was obviously supposed to be a lovely and relaxing family vacation, but it quickly turned into an absolute nightmare. On March 24th of 1998, Amy completely vanished from the ship under very mysterious circumstances. Prior to Amy's disappearance, her and her her brother Brad decided to stay up late at the cruise's Mardi Gras party. They were dancing and drinking with the ship's band, the Blue Orchids. One of the band members named Alistair Douglas also known as Yellow for some reason, was seen drinking with Amy that night and a videographer captured the moment of them dancing together. Weirdly though, he said that the last time he saw Amy was at 1 a.m., which wasn't true according to the time codes of the security footage. So kind of weird thing to lie about. According to the ship's door lock systems, Brad returned to the cabin at 3.35 a.m. and Amy followed behind him five minutes later. Brad reported that him and his sister just sat on the suite's balcony and talked before he ended up going to bed, but Amy stayed out on the balcony longer to smoke some cigarettes. Amy's father reportedly saw her sleeping on the balcony at like 5.15 a.m., but then when he turned back around at 5.30, she was gone. Obviously concerned by this, he checked the cabin, he checked all of the crew's like common areas, and once he realized that he could not find her, he decided to wake up his family and alert them at 6.30 a.m. that Amy was missing. This was when Amy's family began to panic because the boat was about to dock in Curacao. So basically they had, of course, the idea, like don't let anyone off the boat until we find Amy because that makes the most sense. But they were pleading with Royal Caribbean crew members to keep the 2000 passengers on board and make an announcement trying to find Amy. However, the ship's crew said that it was too early to make an announcement ship-wide, but they agreed to make an announcement at 7.50 a.m., which was after most of the passengers had already disembarked the cruise ship. Honestly, I really believe that that was the biggest fumble 
that Royal Caribbean could have done at the time. I don't know who decided it. I'm not saying it's like Royal Caribbean's at fault, but who knows? Because I do love a Royal Caribbean cruise. But that is crazy to me that they were like, it's too early to make an announcement. If I was on a cruise and someone was missing, I would not care if they woke us up at 6.30 a.m. with an alarm being like, this person is missing. You guys can't get off the boat until she is found. I honestly think that this would have saved Amy's life if the crew had just listened to her family because again, all of those people, and I think in the 90s, it was probably different than it is now. Like I think now you have to, I forget. I was on a cruise recently, but I don't remember if you kind of like scan your passport when you leave. No, you don't. You don't have to bring your passport. I actually literally forget. And that's crazy because I was on a cruise a couple of months ago. I don't remember if you have to like scan your passport or something when you leave the cruise, but either way, the rules were different in the 90s. So it makes sense that she was able to get off board without anyone noticing. I think that she would still be alive and okay if they had not let anyone off the boat until she was found. So there's a couple different theories as to what exactly happened with Amy. One theory is an accidental drowning, although I don't really believe this. And I also think most people don't. Her family insists that she was a strong swimmer and wouldn't have fallen overboard. Personally, been on a lot of cruises. I think that it would have made more of a scene had she fallen overboard. Like I don't, she wouldn't just like fall overboard like gracefully. You're gonna scream, you're gonna make some noise. People are gonna see it and hear it. I don't feel like that is accurate at all. I don't feel like that's a reliable theory whatsoever. A more popular theory, and this is what I believe, is that Amy was kidnapped and sold into human trafficking. I think 100% this is what happened and she may still be alive to this day. There's a lot of evidence regarding this, so let's get into that. So first piece of evidence in August of 1998, which was five months after the cruise, Canadian computer engineer claimed to have seen Amy walking down the beach in Curacao. Witness noticed that Amy was constantly trying to get his attention, but she was walking with two men and he ended up losing sight of her at a cafe. And that really sucks because he described Amy's tattoos perfectly to the police. They were identical to the ones the family confirmed it. And the man also said, quote, he was literally two feet away from her and he was sure of complete certainty that it was Amy. So frustrating that someone could be so close and they just slip between your fingers. It's kind of like the Elizabeth Smart case. It reminds me of that because their captors are like almost always with them and it's really scary. In January of 1999, a US Navy officer claimed to have seen Amy at a brothel in Curacao, claimed that he saw this American woman who came up to him, said her name was Amy Bradley, and begged him for help, explaining that she was held against her will there and was not allowed to leave. However, he didn't end up reporting this until much later because he was a US Navy SEAL and he didn't want to lose his job by saying that he was at a brothel. He ended up contacting Amy's family after he had seen her picture in a magazine and after he was a retired Navy SEAL, I'm just like, bro, <laughs> don't you think that that information would have been helpful? Like no one cares that you were at a brothel. If you help save this woman's life, I think we would forgive you. You know, a lot of people think that the crew staff might have been involved in some way. Obviously like the yellow character guy was inconsistent with his story. So that was strange, but also apparently Amy kept getting hit on by a waiter in front of her whole family. Like they all thought this guy was weird. He kept approaching them and asked Amy several times to go get drinks with him. Amy essentially denied all of his advances, but very weirdly, and a lot of people think this might be connected to either the waiter or yellow. On a cruise, you take pictures and then the next day you would be able to like go to the stand and see your photos. Like they were there and you could buy them. And the photographer had printed out all the photos, put them on the stall, but all of Amy's pictures were missing. Literally her whole family pictures were all there. Every like group photos were there, but all of Amy's single photos that she took were just gone. And that is so creepy. So a lot of people think that maybe somebody within the cruise line was involved. Years later in March of 2005, a witness named Judy Maurer claimed that she saw Amy in a department store bathroom in Barbados. She claimed that a woman entered the bathroom accompanied by three men who were like heavily armed and they were threatening her saying that if she didn't follow through with the deal, like she would be killed. So Judy claims that after the men like left the woman alone for a minute, Judy approached her and the woman claimed that her name was Amy and that she was from Virginia. But then before she could say anything else, the men re-entered and took her away. And obviously Judy ended up reporting this right away, but sadly nothing was ever found from it. And there've been other sightings here and there of Amy. And a lot of people believe that she is still out there to this 
this day. I just think the concept, I mean, obviously the concept of human trafficking is scary as hell, but it is so insane. So many missing people probably are still alive somewhere because this is such a real and scary issue. Either way, that is it for today's video. If you guys liked it, please give it a big thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of these unsolved cases. If you have any unsolved cases you want me to cover, let me know in the comments below. But that is it. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. And subscribe for new videos every week. And I will see you guys later. Bye.